If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. In golfer's terms, we're on the back nine now in Revelation. All right. It's going to get interesting. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, our study as much as I have enjoyed studying. Every time I have taught this, this is the third time I have taught the book of Revelation, uh, I learned something new or God reveals something to me that I had not thought about before. Today, I want to talk to you about the seven bold judgments, the seven bold judgments. We can't get all seven in, but we're going to get the first five in today, and then next week we will finish uh, those off. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, number one, now this is going to be hard, you got to think, the first bowl, the second bowl, the third bowl, and the fifth bowl, I thought about trying to make those a little more interesting, uh, but uh, they are what they are, folks. We have to take the Bible for what it is. And so uh, we are preaching verse by verse and line by line. You know, as we look at the book of Revelation, uh, there's been some crazy thing happened. You know, we know the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments. And folks, all these are supernatural acts of God. These things don't normally happen, even though uh, we have seen some of this in the Old Testament, which I will be pointing out today, you have to realize, uh, you know, revelation was meant. It, it, it means literally to reveal, okay? God is opening the future for us, and he is giving the, us a glimpse of what's going to happen. And the best part about this is, I believe with all my life, my heart that the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And yeah, go, there you go. And we are going to leave this place. Everyone that is truly saved uh, will hear that trumpet. And we are going to rapture straight to heaven. And then obviously, as we have taught, that'll start the great tribulation period. You know, the Bible provides the only true beacon of light and hope in this dark world in which we live. Believers are encouraged by the words of peace, love, joy, goodness, and salvation that only God can give. God loves righteousness and faith, but he also hates sin, lies, and wickedness. While God does reward the true believers, he must punish the lost. Revelation Chapter 16 of Revelation contains his final wrath against a rebellious generation of sinners. These seven bold judgments will be rapid fire in a short amount of time, uh, marking the final hours of the day of the Lord. Immediately after the seven bold judgments, Jesus will return uh, to, to destroy the world's armies at the Battle of Armageddon, which we will be speaking of uh, very, very soon. This final wrath of God will completely destroy all rebellion in sinful mankind and bring worldwide destruction like man has never seen. Let's look at the first five bold judgments from God's perspective. And remember, the bold judgments will affect the entire world. They are also similar to the Exodus plagues in the trumpet judgments, which we will point out today. The first bold. Revelation 16, 1, and I heard a loud voice. And 20 times in Revelation, this phrase, it says, and the loud voice, I believe, was God himself. And the reason I say that was it was coming from the temple. It was coming from the temple, the Bible says. And saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the bowls of, wrath, of the wrath of God on the earth. So each of these seven special angels have uh, uh, certain things, bold number one, bold number two, that they will pour out on earth. Now look at verse two, verse two. So the first went and poured out his bowl on earth, and a foul and loathsome sores came upon men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. The first one was 
uh, the bold judgment with loathsome sores. And when you think about this, uh, you could see uh, in the book of Job, Job had these in uh, the conversation uh, in chapter 2. And folks, you have to understand boils. I, you know, I don't want to get too graphic here, but they are nasty, all right? They are a skin tumor type cancer uh, that just, uh, uh, they are irritated, they itch, they are very painful. And, and you know, if you've ever had one, uh, you know how bad these things are. And when you think about this, it, it is a lot like the sixth plague, the sixth plague. And, and that was one that was seen in uh, the Word of God in Exodus. But I want you to see Zechariah first. Zechariah 14. And again, if you don't want to turn there, you know, you can just look on the board. But I don't know about you, but I like to see, uh, you know, uh, the Word of God on the pages also. And chapter 14 says, the day of the Lord, if you look, and I've been trying to show every week that I've taught Revelation, Old Testament prophecy that goes along with this. And these, the Old Testament was written, uh, you know, years, years uh, before Jesus even came. So it shows how true the Word of God is. Look at, look at Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they're standing on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. So you can see the prophetic words of Zechariah. These things are going to happen, and the bulls will be all over. And now notice who they, they uh, are for. Look at the second part of that. They are for the men who had the mark of the beast and who worshiped his image. When it says men, it doesn't exclude the women, okay? He is talking about mankind, mankind. And the reason is because the world has broken God's first commandment. We can't even get the first one right, folks. Exodus chapter 20, go with me there. I know you know it, but I like you to see it in the Bible. Exodus 20, Exodus 20, verse 1. And we know this is where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord, your God. Lord is Jehovah, all right, Jehovah God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God did that for Israel. They were in bondage because they had broken God's laws. You shall have no other gods before me. Folks, how much plainer can we get? Our God, the true God of this Bible, it's capital G. It's Jehovah God. And as Christians, we need to keep God first in our lives. And there's all kinds of gods. I tell you, we worship a lot of things. Some people worship money. Some people worship power. Some pe people worship, you know, uh, uh, different things. Uh, I have noticed lately, and I don't know if you have noticed this, but if you go to a restaurant and just start looking around, how many people are on their phone while they're at a restaurant? And I'd like to see how many. I, I don't know if they can do this, but I, I'd like to see if they could find out how many houses and how many TVs go on in a day day's time in the world. And you think sometimes, folks, we do, okay? Anything we put before God is an idol. And God says, I need to be, you, I need to be number one in your life. Now look what it says, verse 4, And you shall not make for yourself any carved image, any likeness of anything. And you have to remember what the Antichrist is going to do. All right, he is going to set up his own idol, set up his image, and he is going to ask everyone to bow down to that image. And if you want to eat or, or drink, you have to take the mark of the beast. And folks, our world is set up 
for that. It'll be uh, authenticated in some people's minds because of the miracle that will happen. He mimics things that God does. And we have to be careful. Folks, I am telling you, in this day that we live in, discernment is so important in our lives. We need to be able to identify bad things, things that are evil. And my spirit knows it, folks. God in the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And if I do something wrong, he lets me know every time. I can't get away with anything. All right? And so here... These people were, you know, in the times of Revelation, these people were following the Antichrist. And it says, that is in heaven or above, that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon children in their third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing mercy to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. And you have to understand, in this verse, he is saying those Christians that are still here on earth are at that time will not have these things, these bold judgments on them. And you will thank God. By the time we just get to the first five, you will thank your Lord and Savior that that's not going to happen to Christians. And we will talk about that some more. So we see the first bowl soars and boils all over people. And it's worldwide, folks. Okay, this is to the lost, to those who have rejected Jesus Christ and taken the mark of the beast. And let's look at the second bowl in verse 3. In verse 3. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as dead men, in every living creature in the sea. It, the second trumpet was like this also. The first plague in Egypt was like this also. And here what happens is the sea, the salt water, turns to blood. Now, folks, I love to go to the ocean, not as much as Lori does, <laughs> okay? But when you think of how many creatures are in the sea, how many fish and how many things. Matter of fact, uh, sometimes, you know, in Florida, I, I think it happened this past year, they have what they call the red tide. And folks, that kills uh, marine life. And it'll be in coves and it'll be in places. And if you're there at that time, I'm not getting any wa in any water that has any red tint to it whatsoever. So it happens but I've just used that is what a grand scale this is going to be. Think about it, folks. 70% of the earth's surface is water, seawater, salt water. So can you imagine what it's going to be like? The devastation, the death, the smell, okay? Dead things. And that's what he's saying. It became as blood of a dead man. And folks, there is no worse smell than a dead body that has been there for a while. And I cannot tell you, and I cannot emphasize it enough in this sermon, folks, this is worldwide and it is catastrophic. All right? It will be God's final fury. It'll be his fury. And these things are going to happen. Exodus chapter 7. Go to Exodus 7 with me. Exodus 7 verse 19. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt and over the streams and over the rivers and over their ponds and over their pools and water that they may become blood. And again, these were localized. This only happened in Egypt. And you can imagine what it's going to be like when our whole water system, the, the, the salt water, turns to blood. And there shall be blood through all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the water that were in the river and in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And the waters that were in rivers 
turned to blood. The fish that were in the rivers died. The rivers stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water. So there was blood throughout the land of Egypt. Folks, God did it on a small scale in the Exodus plagues. But this is going to be worldwide. It is going to be devastating. It is going to be something that we have never seen in our lives. Now the third bowl. Now the, the third bowl is verse 4. Then the third angel poured out the bowl on the rivers and springs and water and became blood. And the, the reason this is so important we drink the fresh water, folks. We're talking about lakes. We're talking about streams. We're talking about uh, the, the cleansing process of water. Any fresh water. And the only water that's going to be available in those days will be bottled water. I'm sure that'll be there. But you will see how scarce very quickly that will be. Matter of fact, your body is made mainly, uh, if I remember in, in biology, like 92% water. Does that sound right? Am I close there? And so we need water. To live, we need water. And you can see how this will be devastating, devastating uh, to our fresh water. Again, it reminds us of the plague, uh, in, of, of the first plague in Egypt. And the third trumpet uh, found in Revelation earlier. And then it says, And I heard an angel of the waters saying. I think it's interesting that after the first three plagues, there's a pause here. And this angel, this angel that did the plague there, now spoke out. And I believe it was for everyone to hear. And what he is doing is he is defending God. He is telling them why this is happening to them. And the thing through these plagues and all that goes on in Revelation, in my mind, in, in, in my logic, I simply say, if these things happen, somebody's mad. <laughs> all right? And God's fury is falling on mankind. He's given them chance after chance after chance to turn to God. Yet even today, men and women on TV blaspheme God in some ways. They do not recognize Jehovah God for who he is and what he has done. So after the third bowl happens, this angel says, You are righteous, O Lord. The one who is, who was, and who is to be. He is Jehovah God. He is alive and on the throne. Who was the eternal God? He always was. Nobody created God. God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit always was. The one who is and who was, and who is to be, because you have judged these things. And folks, I'm just telling you, a lesson that I was slow to learn, especially when I was in my teenage years, for every action, there's a reaction. And sometimes, and that followed by my dad's phrase, son, what were you thinking? All right? Because lots of times, I obviously didn't think that through. And this is what gets me about, we're talking mankind here. And all this has happened over a period of years. Seven years, the tribulation. Three and a half good, good and, three, and three and a half bad. Three and a half years these things have been going on, but yet man is not acknowledging God and realizing this is from God and I need to change something in my life. You know who the biggest problem in your life is? Can I help you today? When you get up in the morning and you start to brush your teeth, look in that mirror right there. Folks, I am my biggest problem. 
We want to blame it on a spouse. We want to blame it on a boss. We want to blame it on, you know, uh, you can just, the folks, these people have made their choice. And it's getting serious, folks. We're talking death everywhere. We're talking things that we have never seen in our lives. And then verse 6, for they have shed the blood of the saints, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is of uh, their just due. The angel's voice, loud, and be, could be heard by all, and that's what he was saying. He was saying there, the reason this has happened, because of the blood that was shed for the people that the Antichrist kills, for all who has lost their life for the cause of Christ. That's why these are happening. And that's why this plague is so devastating. And you have given them blood to drink. I'm telling you, many, many, many people of that day will die because of these plagues. And the God is just simply saying, I've given you a chance. I sent my son Jesus. I've given you the word of God, but yet you still ignore the invitation of salvation. And boy, I'm talking, you talk about regrets, folks. There are going to be regrets, regrets when all this starts. So we see the first, second, and we see the third bowl. Revelation 19. Just go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. Revelation 19, 1. After these things, I heard a loud voice. There it is again. And a great multitude uh, in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to our Lord, Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Folks, I am telling you, God is going to destroy the Antichrist. Destroy it. And we know that even, uh, you know, at the Battle of Armageddon, the Bible tells us that blood will run halfway up a horse. There'll be so much bloodshed in that time, and we'll, we'll cover that in a couple of weeks. So we see the first and the second and the third bowl. Let's look at the fourth bowl. But verse 7, and this is still with the third bowl. I forgot we had one more verse there. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and right, righteous are your judgments. Remember those saints that were under the altar that, that died for the cause of Christ? There is another angel there saying that, saying, hey, God took care of that. God did exactly what he said he would do. So the fourth bowl is in, chapter, in verse 8. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. Now notice the first three, it was poured out on the earth. But this angel flies to the sun and pours out their bowl on the sun. And it says, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Folks, I've been sunburned before where I was just miserable, okay? You fall asleep on the beach with your headphones on and you're not under the umbrella. That's not a good thing if you sit out there for a couple hours. I can testify of that. I mean, I'm looking for something to take the steam out of my skins. And it was saying, and the power was given him to scorch men with fire. Folks, it's going to be an intense heat. It's going to be a heat. And I know, I don't know what the record is, uh, somewhere like 130-something degrees. And, you know, the older I get, I don't like cold and I don't like heat. I want it right in the middle somewhere. But this is a heat that we have never seen. It literally are burning people. And men were scorched, notice the words, folks, with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent or give 
in glory. So you can see the fourth angel and the sun scorch man's fi mankind. It was like a fire. It was like hell's fury. And another thing I thought of, this is one of the things I'd never thought of before. Every once in a while, I have a thought that is creative. And I got to thinking, Steve, if that heat is that, that you know, strong, it's going to melt the glaciers. It's going to melt all the ice that has built up and our ocean levels are going to go up and there will probably be tsunamis and there will be flooding like we've never seen before. So we see these themes of devastation. Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. And again, if you look at the title of the chapter, Impending Judgment on Earth. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haunted people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the law. They have break, broken God's law. Change the ordinance. Folks, you need to be registered as a voter and you need to vote the Christian way. That's, the, that's what we do. That's what we need to do. Broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. So we see the fourth bowl is the sun scorching mankind. And then the last bowl that we're studying today, but it's the fifth bowl, Look in verse 10. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of pain. Now, folks, I'm just telling you, when, when actual the gnawing of your tongue would feel better than what is happening to you on the outside, that is serious stuff. Serious stuff. And it says, they blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. Oh, folks, this is the last time. These seven bold judgments are the last chance for people to be saved. And we are talking about darkness. And when we think of darkness, it was the ninth plague and it was the fourth trumpet. Exodus 10, verse 21. Exodus 10, 21. Well, let me get there. Sorry about that. Exodus 10, verse 21. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt darkness which may even be felt. What does that mean? It is so dark. It's pitch black. All right? You, you put your hand up this close to your face and you're not going to be able to see it. When I was a kid, I remember we got to go uh, to the Grand Canyon and on the way we went to the Carlsbad Caverns. Does that sound right? We got down in there and they said, now hold on to your kids, okay? And they turned out the lights, and I am telling you, I've never seen anything that dark. Pitch black is what he's saying. Verse 22, so Moses stretched out his hands toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. And folks, we're talking about more than three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And that's why they are like the plagues, but much, much stronger, more intense uh, than the bold judgments. So we see that men blaspheme God. Men would not repent. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 with me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30. For we know him who said, we're talking about God, Vengeance is mine, 
I will repay, said the Lord. Folks, God has warned us and warned us and warned us. In the days of Noah, what did we do? They would not listen to Noah. And many, many drowned. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Folks, I know that sounds harsh, but it's fair. It is just. It is God. He can't let man get away with sin because Jesus Christ paid for their sins. Jesus Christ died on a cross and rose again. Jesus Christ did that. And the invitation given to all mankind is come. Come, you can be saved. Romans 10. Romans 10, and I know you know this. Romans 10, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm talking to everyone in this building today. I'm talking to everyone that is listening online. You don't have to go to hell. You have been given a choice. And I pray to God that today, you would choose Jesus. Folks, this life is just a temporary thing. Eternity is forever. And I'll tell you how much God loves you. 2 Peter 3 9, and I close with this. 2 Peter 3 9. The, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some kind of slackness, but is long suffering towards us. There are sinners that'll just say, I hadn't seen no God. I had a guy the other day say, God hadn't done nothing for me. And I just, matter of fact, I took a step back. I said, he's done a lot for me. Well, I just don't believe in your God. Well, I do. Because I've seen God work, folks. The greatest decision you'll ever make is to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. And he... His promises are true. In John chapter 14, it is true. I will come again. And he is coming. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'm telling you, it may be cold outside, but it is warm in here. The Holy Spirit is here, and it'd be a good day to give your heart and your life to Christ. Now look at the second part. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Oh, folks. God has shown himself through creation. God has seen. Folks, we have so many uh, examples in the Old Testament and examples in the New Testament. What we shouldn't do and what we should do. And the bottom line is, follow Jesus, folks. Follow Jesus. Love him with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your body. And tell others about Jesus before it is eternally too late for them. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we have. And God, I thank you for your word. And I know today sounds harsh, but it's Bible truth. And God, we need the truth of the Bible in our hearts and in our lives. God, I believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I believe it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. I believe it is your message to mankind. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus before it's too late. So God, if there's one here today that doesn't know you, God, I pray today would be their day of salvation. God, I pray if there's a Christian here that needs to rededicate their life to Christ, I pray that they would come forward and either pray or talk to one of us. Someone needs to follow the Lord in baptism or even join the church. God, whatever you want to do today, we give you this invitation. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for all who came this day. They had an excuse to stay home today, but they have come. And God, I pray you bless them. Thank you for those who are listening online. God, I pray they would heed to the word of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Will you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?